Hi, my name is Janelle Dronkers. I'm an international student advisor here in the Office for International Programs. I work primarily with international students and I will be here to walk you through the OPT application process. Before I do, I would like to introduce you to the other members of my team. These are my coworkers, Tammy Renner and Marion Carlson. That's me. We are the International Students and Scholars team of the OIP. Part of our job is to advise F1 students on maintaining their status. As you can see, Tammy and I work at the Lakeshore campus and Marion is located at the Water Tower campus. You can reach us at iss at luc.edu. You can also meet us at our offices during walk-in hours. If you cannot make it for walk-in hours, you are welcome to email us to schedule an appointment. As an F1 student, you have several options after completing your program and graduating from Loyola University Chicago. One option is optional practical training, also referred to as OPT. If you go to this section on our website, which is luc.edu forward slash iss forward slash optional practical training, you'll see under eligibility criteria that OPT is employment related to your major field of study. All F1 students close to their graduation date who have been enrolled full-time for at least two consecutive semesters are eligible to apply for OPT authorization. Feel free to scroll through this page for more information. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, also known as USCIS, is responsible for granting authorization for OPT. This means that our office will review your application documents. However, it is the USCIS who makes the final decision on employment authorization. You are eligible for 12 months of OPT for each higher education level you complete. For example, you are eligible for 12 months of OPT after completing a bachelor's degree, and then another 12 months of OPT after completing a master's degree. If your major field of study is a science, technology, engineering, or a mathematics, field, you may be eligible for an extension of OPT. You do not need a job offer to apply for OPT. Employers may also be changed during the 12 months of your OPT. Upon approval of OPT work authorization, you will receive an employment authorization document, also known as an EAD, which looks like this. You cannot begin working until you have this card in hand. You will see here in this section that there are very important deadlines and steps to follow when applying for OPT. You can scroll through this section and go through all the steps yourself in your own time. You will notice there are quite a lot of different steps to go through and important deadlines to keep in mind. As for deadlines, the OPT application can take up to four months to be processed by the USCIS so it is very important to apply as soon as you can. You can apply as early as 90 days before completion of all course requirements or up to 60 days after completion. Upon approval, your OPT can begin within 60 days of your program end date. Remember, you cannot begin work until you have received your EAD. Now that you know about important deadlines, let's take a look at the important steps you must take to apply for OPT. Step 1. Gather the following OPT application documents. A completed form I-765. The first form you need to understand in order to apply for OPT is the I-765, Application for Employment Authorization. This is the form you have to file in order to apply for OPT. You will see here that the form I-765 on the USCIS website is very simple. You start here, permission to accept employment, and you fill out the relevant fields that apply to you. Pay close attention to question 16 here. 
we actually help you on our instruction form in the OIP. All you do is enter C3B. And the rest of the form should be very simple. It is also very important to enter your correct address here. This is the address the USCIS will send your EAD card to. The second form you need to fill out is the completed form G1145, the e-notification of application petition acceptance. Here is an example of the e-notification of application petition acceptance form. This contains your information that the USCIS will use to notify you of updates on your application. So it is important to make sure everything here is correct. Email address, mobile phone number. They will text you updates if you decide to put your phone number in here. The next item you are required to include in your OPT application package is a copy of the first I-20 issued to you by Loyola University Chicago. If you have misplaced it, please turn in an I-20 that was stamped at the port of entry more than one year ago. Next, you'll be required to include a copy of all I-20s for previous CPT and or OPT employment authorization. Next, you'll need a copy of your I-94. If you don't have your I-94, you can access it online at the U.S. Customs and Border Protection website. You go to this section, i94.cbp.dhs.gov forward slash i94, and click here, yes, I have read and understood the information and agree to these terms, submit, and here is where you enter in all of your information, your name, your birth date, your passport number, country of issuance. Once you enter this information, you will click get most recent I-94. The next image you see is your I-94. Please print that and include that in your OPT application package. Next, you'll need an image of your passport identification page. Here is an example of a copy of an identification page. Next, you'll need a copy of your U.S. visa stamp. Here is an example of your F-1 visa stamp. Next, you will need a check or money order payable to the Department of Homeland Security for the I-765 filing fee. You can check filing fee amounts by going to the I-765 Application for Employment Authorization section in the USCIS website. You can see here, if you scroll down to filing fee, there is an updated fee for the I-765, which at the moment is 380. Remember to always check this as fees may change. You'll also need two passport style photos with your I-94 number and name written on the back. You can also check travel.state.gov for information on passport photo requirements. You'll see on this page it outlines exactly what you need when getting your passport photos. Walgreens or CVS are good places to get standard sized passport style photos. Remember, you must print your name and I-94 admission number on the back of each photo in pencil. Your photos must be less than six months old and comply with passport photo size regulations. This is where you can find the information on standard passport photo sizes. And if applicable, please make copies of previous EID cards front and back. This is for those of you who have done OPT in the past. And last, we require a completed OIP OPT request form. If you go to the form section of the International Students and Scholars page, Click on Optional Practical Training. Here you will see the list of documents I just mentioned and also the OIP OPT request form. You will need to fill out your information here. 
and pick a start date for your OPT. The start date must be within 60 days of your program completion date. Marion and I will keep this form to process your new I-20. Once you have gathered all mentioned documents, you can move on to Step 2, the OPT application review. Visit the OIP to meet with me or Tammy or Marion at the Water Tower campus to review your OPT application. After reviewing your application, we will keep your OPT request form and return the rest of your application to you. Do not mail your application materials until you return to the OIP to pick up your new I-20 containing your OPT authorization. Step 3. Pick up your authorized I-20. You will be emailed when your authorized I-20 is ready for pickup at the OIP on Lakeshore campus or at the OIP office at the Water Tower campus. You will receive two identical copies of the authorized OPT I-20. Sign page 1 of each I-20. You can see down here, item 11, name of student, signature of student, and date. So please print, sign, and date. Do not forget this. Sign both copies. Step 4. Make a copy of your entire OPT application, including the authorized I-20, before sending it to the USCIS. Please take all these forms, copy them, and keep one for yourself on file. Step 5. Mail your application to USCIS. You can find the address here on this page. It is very important that your OPT application be filed within 30 days of the issuance date of the OPT I-20. Marion, Tammy, and I strongly recommend that you send your application no later than two weeks after you pick up your I-20. The USCIS will send you a receipt notice within three to four weeks of sending in your OPT application. Keep this receipt notice in case a problem arises. If you completed the G1145E notification mentioned in Step 1, Item 2, you will be able to check the status of your application online. As you can see, once you enter your receipt number here, you should be able to see which stage your application is in, whether it's acceptance, initial review, or even card document production. Remember, you cannot begin work until you have received your EAD. So even if you see that your card is here, that your status has reached this point, you cannot work until you have that card in your hands. Once you have received your EAD, it is important to maintain your OPT status. USCIS requires that you be employed within 90 days of the start date of your EAD. You must not exceed 90 days of unemployment during your OPT. You can find this information in the OPT Application Procedures Package from the OIP. You must also report the start date and employer information for any or every job you have while on OPT. You must also report any change of local address so we can enter the information in CVIS. All of this can be added to this form. Once you have updated employer information and or updated address information, please fill out this form and email it to us. We will then update your information in CVIS. Here is some important information about travel. If you wish to travel while your OPT application is pending, keep in mind that you cannot re-enter the U.S. until you have your OPT EAD card in hand. For re-entry into the U.S. while on OPT, you will need the following. An I-20 endorsed for travel by OIP before you leave the country, your valid EAD, a valid F-1 entry visa in your passport, and also a job offer letter. I know this is a lot of information to take in, so please contact Tammy, Marion, or myself with any questions. We are here to support you and are happy to meet with you in person. Walk-in hours are Monday through Wednesday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you cannot make it during that time, you are welcome to email us and schedule an appointment.